Out of there, guys and gals. On today's episode, we're going to go ahead and figure out why the old cod is dumping all that Texas black gold all over the bottom of it. And it's not for rust prevention. So many of y'all know that on my way to the No Name Nationals, the old cod struck some of that Texas black gold. Unfortunately, it was underneath. And several courts later, it got me to the No Name Nationals and back, but it did do a significant amount of rust prevention, and it's everywhere. Got it all the way back here on the fuel tank, all over the exhaust. And it slightly coated the rear axle. Most of the rust prevention is all up here. Oh good, I'm glad those wires are rust prevented now. It's pretty saturated. I'm pretty sure this output shaft is, is leaking. Transmission's definitely seeping somewhere. But I think the culprit might be a rear main. Because there's oil everywhere in here. And it's saturated really bad. And oils is basically dumping everywhere. Though uh, I got it in the shop fast enough where it wasn't leaking and at least the uh, oil that's leaking seems to be clean the old sight glass and the transmission still shows that we're good so i know it's not that thing dumping oil and based on how many quarts i had to put in this clapped out cummins i'm pretty confident it's the rear main hopefully because i didn't buy an oil pan gasket so today in order to stop the texas black gold from emanating from the bottom of this truck and coating everything including the front end of my trailer we're going to pull this transmission, do rear main, and unfortunately, I've got to do a clutch. Because the other day, when I drove into town again, it started slipping. Bad. Oh, the fun of living that clapped out Dodge life. So let's dive into it and see if we can find out where this thing's leaking. Pretty sure it's a rear main. Hopefully. Because those are the parts I bought. Alright, so first thing we got to do, get this drive shaft out. Don't ask me how I know that. But I'm pretty sure the uh, first thing you should remove is the drive shaft. The drive shaft is still in it, Eric. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> hey, FYI, if you ever need to remove a transmission, remove the drive shaft first. I don't want to talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Don't think about it. FYI, I've actually never had this drive shaft out, out of this truck. Oh, that's got some of that blue Loctite on it. I wonder. Now, even though this is not a how-to, I would recommend after you pull all these straps and bolts, place them on the floor somewhere where you'll kick them underneath the bench and spend hours finding them. That's what I like to do. Ooh, that's squeaky. They seem like they're still in decent shape. Probably could uh, use some new new joints in this thing though. Keep the old needle bearings out from falling out. Let's set that right there. Oh, these these aren't as bad. It's probably because they're uh, closer to that source of Texas black gold, getting all that natural lubrication. Ooh. About to dump that drive shaft out the back of this thing. Oh, I forgot. There's a lot of pookie on the back of this transmission. I forgot that I, uh, it was seeping, so I pookied the crap out of the top of it. Now the fun part. Get this carrier bearing out. I really need to find an impact. Typical story, uh, got back from No Names and can't find any of the tools. I really want to impact though. My hands hurt already. Oh. Oh. That hand hurts, not this one, but I didn't want to let go of the U joint. Fun part. Uh, ah. 
you know, you gotta try to save your back as best you can, because you know you're getting old when you uh, tweak your back bending over to pet the cat. Yeah, hurt today. Well, that drive shaft is very well lubricated. Oh, Ugh. could be a fun day. I can already already feel it. Oh yeah, and don't forget to take out the shifter. Or you put a jack underneath the engine and pull the transmission. Yeah, do that first. All right, the oil in this transmission is not very old. So I'm going to attempt to capture it. And y'all can't see the sight glass, but the oil is still clean. You can tell from the spot that it is leaking, it's clean oil. So in order to save a few bucks, I'm going to try to capture most of this. I'm sure it won't go well. See, looks pretty clean. Yeah, just precaution's sake, I'll go ahead and filter it through a dirty sock. You know, make sure to get all the evil out of it. Another reason I gotta drain this transmission, because like I pointed out on this custom PTO cover, it's leaking. Which means I'm probably gonna have to seal up a whole bunch of stuff and regret all the pookie I put on the top of this thing. Fortunately, I couldn't find any gaskets, so I'll probably be making some gaskets later. So I got the transmission strapped to the transmission jack. I put one of those ratchet straps on a couple boards. Now the fun part, removing this cross member. Then we can get to getting this transmission out. Maybe find out where this thing really is leaking. I'm just hoping it's leaking from one of the gaskets that I actually bought. Good news is, is all these bolts are well lubricated. So I'm sure they'll come off easy. Now the fun ones to get to, you know, the ones on the top of the frame that cabs in the way. Yeah, I might have to go find some knuckle busters for this one. All right, now the fun part, getting this very, very greasy and oily piece of junk iron out of this truck. It should be just about four bolts and hopefully the uh, shifter doesn't hang. Maybe that hole is just big enough for it to slide on through. All right, so I'm about to pull this transmission out of the bell housing. Gotta get these bolts. And I forgot this truck used to have a PTO unit on it and uh ran a big gin pole set up well the pto used to sit right here and the previous owner ground down the head of that bolt to fit that pto unit let's see if i can uh get something on it maybe break it loose because uh not a lot of meat left on that All right, so I got the passenger side bolts out. As you can see, this is what the bolt's supposed to look like. And this is the one that was by the PTO. Looks like someone was either trying to make a bottle opener or got a little too rowdy with the grinder. We're gonna have to replace that bolt. Come on, focus, focus. Show me you're having a bad day by not telling me you're having a bad day. Oh. All right, when uh when I removed the shifter, 
I didn't realize I needed to remove all the shifter. As you can see, I don't have a lot of room to pull this transmission back before this hits. So I've got to remove this part of the shifter, which I've been told is a lot of fun. And of course, I brought all the wrong tools. And I took a ladder to get up here. Let's see if I get lucky, because I've heard lots of bad things about these. Oh, these don't even reach. Oh, I got a most awkward position. Ah! Got it. Now, heard a lot of different things on how this thing's supposed to come out. Oh, hey! Apparently I got lucky, because I've heard horror stories on that. I guess maybe it's uh, putting it back in that's going to be the problem. I'll just leave that right there, because uh, apparently, if you look closely, someone has gnawed on the, on the side of these pens before. Alright, eh, don't look too bad in there. Let's get this transmission out. Be oily right there. All right, now that we got the transmission out, we can tell uh, there's definitely some lubrication in there. So we got to get this bell housing off, and I'm slowly gonna have to work to the uh, transmission adapter. I I know, Remy. I know. One thing I did notice. That bolt came loose, so we'll have to fix that when we reinstall the bell housing. So I need to get this slave cylinder off and get this bell housing off and see how bad this is. Luckily, it looks like this bell housing will come out rather easy. We can only hope. You know that bolt I just showed y'all? I just pulled it out by hand. And with my arthritic hands, you know it was loose then. Good catch, I guess. This could have ended up in the flywheel and clutch assembly. Part of the course. I find a knuckle buster. Can't get to one of these. Always that one. Yeah, it's a little dirty in there. Hmm. Throw up bearing's really oily. Yeah, there's a lot of oil in there. Crap. So, as you can see, it's pretty oily in here. That's not where it's supposed to be oily. Bad part is, is the previous owner of this truck had put a new clutch in it. But I guess they didn't do a rear main. And if they did, maybe they did it wrong. I guess now, let's get this clutch off and flywheel. See how bad this rear main is. Well, unfortunately, Dodge was for his right. That looks like a rear main seal leak to me. It's been leaking pretty good too. Really good. Eh, at least my uh, transmission adapter won't rust. Well, now we gotta get this whole thing out of here. So I can get to this seal and the seal behind it. I think there's two seals there. Well, we gotta take this thing apart anyways. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's supposed to be dry. It even says to be dry. I had to make sure this 
wasn't leaking. And we gotta make sure the back of that cam isn't leaking. But this is definitely leaking. By that, I meant this. Definitely leaking right here. All right, went ahead and pressure washed all the failure and disappointment off the majority of these parts. Good thing is, pressure washer took all that pookie that I spread all over that thing. So now I've got to make some gaskets for that because I couldn't get any at the auto parts store. And probably brush these off one more time. A little degreaser and brake cleaner, get them cleaned up. Then I can put all this back together. Now previously I was able to seal this PTO cover without any problems. But ever since I've owned this truck, this top shift tower has always seeped. Now you can see that I tried to cram some pookie in there to get it to seal. You can also tell that they installed a cork gasket, but I don't think they used any of that pookie. So I'm going to go ahead and make another gasket and then slick it up and slab it back down. Hopefully it uh, seals this time. Now when I got this truck, it had a PTO drive off the passenger side PTO cover. As I pointed out earlier, it had some custom shaped bolts in order to clear the drive. Now I found this PTO cover that had a little sight glass on it and it shows you how to fill it up where you can put an extra quart in this thing. Problem is, is I think this thick aluminum cover just doesn't seal as well to this iron case as the original steel covers. So I'm gonna make a gasket for this one too because last time, as y'all can tell, I just pookied the crap out of it. But like most things, it's still seeped. I'm not saying this truck's never gonna leak oil. I'm just trying to slow it down. Yeah, it's obvious that this original gasket never had any type of liquid help on it. I wonder if I could just clean this and pookie it back on. You know, that would save me a lot of time. I gouged it a little bit, but uh, we'll just soak that up with extra pookie. Yeah, you can see where it was seeping. It's real thin here. Uh, yeah, and I guess I guess this seal was so tight on metal metal, it just pushed all the pookie onto the inside. Okay, well, get all this cleaned up and make a gasket, I guess. All right, let's uh, cut out a cork gasket and see if this works. Got my razor, and I got these little doohickeys from the Dodge Whisperer. Fortunately, I don't have the exact size, but this should get me close. I think you're supposed to put them on a drill, spin it, and it cuts. I think that's what these are for. He's not here, so I'm guessing. Now, obviously, I don't need all of this. I just need the outside ceiling surface. Because if I use the whole thing, then I don't have a sight glass. Alright, got all my lines drawn. I promise they're symmetrical. And I'll use this as a straight edge. Cut out the center. See how bad I did. There you have it. One PTO gasket. Again, uh... You can buy these. I just procrastinated too long and have a very short window to do this job. So I did what I could. Because the parts store says uh, they couldn't get them for a while. Alright, 
Dodge Whisperer went ahead and knocked out that rear main seal for me. So I guess now I've got to start assembling all this. I hope I can remember how it goes back together. I forgot to hit record. But with a combination of using a transmission jack and throwing out my lower back, the Dodge Whisperer is able to slide a bolt in for me. So let's get the rest of these in. I'm actually using a uh, Valair clutch and flywheel setup. A lot of different companies sell them. You can look around. This isn't really a performance clutch. This is more of a uh, OEM replacement, but it's still better than what I had. Now, after looking at that clutch before, it can be saved. It's, we caught it right at the moment of slipping, which means all I got to do is clean it. I can use it for something else. You know, maybe that clapped out white 89 Cummins I have. Maybe it'll work for that. Or is that a 90? Either way, it will work for that. Fun part's going to be uh, torquing these. I think it's like 100 something. Yeah. Problem is, is the engine rotates too. Got to get an old bolt and chain to fix that problem. What do y'all do? Bolt and chain it, or do you get someone to hold the front end of the motor? All right, let me go look up some flywheel torque specs, and then we'll get to working on this. All right, first let's find out if uh, I can just torque this and not have to chain it. I doubt it, but we're going to try. Yeah, well, it's all that coming. Let me go find a bolt in the chain now. Got it. Hopefully it stays. So now to put a clutch in it. Is it going to the outer bolt for us? We'll see we... There we go. Right, it's not going to fall off. I just want to work those down slowly. A little bit at a time. Can't just ugga dug all of them? No. This lack of ugga dugging is really bothering me. It takes a while because you're technically supposed to run all those down evenly, which I kind of did. Oh, good, that's stuck. That means it's aligned perfect. Crap. Yeah, make make sure to put bolts as far away as possible. It makes it more convenient that way. Oh, no, no. Definitely let go of it before you. You got any. Hmm. Good, I most definitely lost a bolt. Fantastic. That's what I get for laying all my bolts on the lift. <laughs> gotta get all those torqued up but first I've got to find apparently there's one bolt that I've lost fantastic let the search begin all right found a bolt tighten them all up let's see if I can stab transmission
I swole up quick. And after icing down my hand, transmission just went right in. Out of problem. Definitely didn't suck it in with the bolts. Never suck in a transmission with the bolts. Definitely didn't happen. Pushed right in. I promise. And I installed a new transmission mount. Let's get this cross member in and not talk about how the transmission was installed. Y'all can judge me later when we test drive this. Or just turn it on. Something's going to happen. All right, cheap quality uh, transmission mount. All the threads were buggered when I went to go put all the old nuts back on it. It crossed thread, so I ran a thread chaser on it. Uh, that completely reworked some threads and then came stuck to it, so I cut it off. I don't know what threads they were, but they weren't metric and they weren't standard. and They were covered in whatever this stuff's made in. So I just cut the bolts off and I'm gonna stick some other bolts in. That on top of the yoke if you can get it there. Mm -hmm. mm. Alright, let's try to fill up this transmission now. Oh yeah, that's gonna work perfect. And we got our previously drained oil, which is perfectly good, and save a buck. Oh yeah, it's definitely Napa 10W30. So this is the actual oil I run in this. Most people run 5W30, but this is the same stuff I put in my motor. So I figure it's good enough for this. All right, now the fun part, reinstalling this. I hear that's a pickle. Aha! Got it. No idea if that's the way you're supposed to do it, but that's the way I did it. Oh crap, I forgot about this. That's gonna be fun to install down there. Words it wise, if y'all are gonna work inside your truck, maybe clean it out first. Well, you're not sitting in all this trash. Yeah, I don't have patience for this today. Just don't. Got to get this thing out of the shop. So, I'm just going to install this. And we'll mess with that later when the exhaust starts billowing in from the shifter. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if I installed this correctly or if it makes horrible noises. Let's at least see if he can get out of the shop because the Dodge Whisperer got his strap back and he's itching to jump on the tractor and drag this thing out of here. Oh, it's not going to start. Oh, you mean you actually disconnected the battery? I, was, yeah. I wasn't going to ask. I was like, well, maybe he's smart enough to do that. See, and that's your problem, Noah. I mean, it you looked like stuff. everything was fine. So. You do these things. It's always after the fact. So you're waiting for me to get electrocuted by the starter. Uh-huh. 
Them 12 volts hurt, buddy. Just because you shocked yourself on that Jeep, you want to watch the world burn. works good enough to get it out of the Dodge Whisperer shop, which is important because he gets angry in the evenings, especially at the beginning of the week if my junk is still filling up his shop. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Stick around because I found a whole lot more problems with this truck that unfortunately I'm going to have to fix. Supervising or just trying to bug me, Remy? I know. Clap tap dodge light. Remy. Yeah. Oh, demon cat. Every time, huh?